So one of my favorite areas in arts is arts technology because the possibilities seem endless. I mean, technology is impressive as it is, but when you get creative people behind the scene, they really know how to put on a show. Mm -hmm. So the UNM Arts Lab, which stands for Arts Research Science and Technology, does a lot of these arts technology projects. And one cr project that they're currently working on is Dome Poems, Memory and Emergence, mm -hmm. which is a 20-minute film um, commemorating the New Mexico State Centennial. And it recognizes the past 100 years through these poetic and photographic reflections, which you'll see in a minute, um, you know, on culture and identity in northern New Mexico communities. Mm -hmm. And you guys are probably wondering what dome poems are. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine yourself literally in a dome, kind of like this mini planetarium uh -huh. experience. And there's these multi projections that create this immersive space. And um, what dome poems they present in these full dome, po uh, full domes, but also in plazas, and they're building a portable dome to bring it to other communities and try to connect communities throughout the state. And the amazing people behind the project um, are this group of talented and prestigious New Mexicans: the arts lab director Tim Castillo esteemed photographer and filmmaker Miguel Gandert, who, Hugh Walker, who's the artist that renders the images for this production, and of course the silver tongue behind the poetry, um, Levi Romero, who's the New Mexico Centennial, Centennial Poet Laureate and author of Poetry of Remembrance. So with us today, Levi Romero. Thank you for being well, here. Well, thank you for having wow, me. Wow, what uh, a pleasure. Yeah, I'm not used to being on TV this early. <laughs> 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 Good to see you. Thank you very much. You focus a lot of your work on northern New Mexico and uh, concentrate on the culture and the experience there. And we have somebody on the couch that kind of grew up in that part of the state. So um, it is a unique part of our culture and heritage, is it not? Well, it's unique to not just to New Mexico and the region, but to other parts of the world as well. The yeah. language, the traditions, the spirituality, um, it's all inherent to this place and, you know, really how it has evolved over over the course of time and endures uh, into the present day. And a lot of those things, even though it's only two or three hours away, they're very different from Albuquerque culture as well. Yeah, even just an hour away between here and Santa Fe, the accents change mm -hmm. and, the, and the placement of the, the, the emphasis on, on the syllables or the vowels or whatever, it begins to change. So you, it's, it's noticeable and it's really what uh, some consider the, the Manito culture. Uh, which is um, sort of been recognized to be north of Socorro to the southern Colorado border. But uh, really, it exists beyond that. Uh, when you look at the diaspora of people from northern New Mexico that have gone on to um, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, California, you know, Texas, and so they've taken their culture with them and have uh, transplanted it as well. Right. Now, where are you from? Uh, um, I'm actually from a little village uh, the, the original name was El Puesto El Embudo de San Antonio, mm. and today it's known as Dixon. Okay. <laughs> they shortened it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful area, you're right. What a great place to grow up yeah. and have a, a rich experience. Um, we have some images, and I, I kind of give us some guidance on this because we want to show these pictures, but do they relate to your poetry, or is this part of a the story. Come yeah, on. some of what is part of the Dome Poem project is uh, this image here is the, the a Molino in, in Cleveland, um, up in Mora in that area. And so there's one of the poems that we're using, um, which is called Molino Abandonado, Abandoned Molino, mm -hmm. and the old grist mills that the used to mill. exist, right? And so we're using um, some of those images. Miguel Gander, the photographer, has gone out on the road recently. Now, has this, does this exist? It exists, and they have a wonderful uh, festival in the fall, in uh -huh. September, and they open it up, and they actually get the whole wheels and everything rolling again. Oh, wow. How about that? Yeah. Didn't know that. Okay, and, and mm -hmm. what do we have here? We have some of the, the people of the area. Right, and some of these photographs here that depict these uh, kind of the, the Vato Locos are, again, photographs of Miguel's that he took uh, back in the, these ones in particular, in the 1980s around uh, Alburquerque. Mm -hmm. Some of them were focused kind of in the San Jose area, San Juan. Yeah. And um, so there's a poem called Los Heroes that, I, that we're using that uh, honors uh, that archetype. 
as somebody from the community that really possessed the knowledge and the wisdom and the spirituality of, you know, of, of what it was to be from that place. So we're using some of those photos for that. So I always like to hear the story behind why people start something. So what really motivated you to start writing? Um, you know, I don't, it's been a while now what motivated me. I think it was, uh, I'm an introvert really by nature. And so, I, you know, just very quiet type of person. But mm -hmm. there was all, like anybody in this room, we all have these things inside ourselves that uh, yearn to be expressed and oftentimes we don't have an outlet for that right. and I think it leads to frustration and all kinds of problems but for me um, poetry was that outlet and so that's kind of how I started uh, when I was in middle school back in the um, early 70s but it was also at a time as I was telling Siobhan earlier when it wasn't safe for a young Chicano male to be writing poetry mm. and it, in some ways it still is not uh, uh, so I wrote, but I kept it to myself. I couldn't share it with anybody for a long time. It's just not accepted? Or? It just wasn't a um, manly it's thing to do. Not a macho thing. A to, macho thing, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, can, do you have a poem you can share with us? Sure. We, um, have, we have time. Okay, to, great. Um, this is one of the poems from the Dome um, Project series, and this one is called Taos Nicho. It sort of touches on who we are culturally this complexity of what it is to be a Nuevo Mexicano mm. and these dualities that we, we live through. It's called Taos Nicho. Tus santos y tus velas, que me salvarán? Sin la cruz no hay gloria. Pero como dice mi hermano Juan, todos quieren la gloria, pero nadie quiere la cruz. Indigenous mother encased in the dead dust of permanence, how fast the world goes us by shadowy and flapping like the clothes on the line in the backyard off a back road in ranchos the sky darkening along the edge of the mountain autumn storm clouds approaching slowly as if set and framed within a landscape interpretation of an oil or pastel to what direction larry should i cast out my prayers the sun comes up still to the east but my life is disoriented. My feet are fast and swift, but with no direction, no intent other than in the getting there. I feel like the Indian dancer in the painting whose headdress and plumes are frozen and whose gaze has been blushed out by a well-applied brushstroke. It isn't the what is not there that one can find what is. On this day, in este día, El Día de la Asunción de Nuestra Señora, I watched footage of last summer's parade on the local TV station, watched the young fiesta queen, white gloved and crowned, waving her hand, flicking her wrist in perfect motion, as they do in places like Macy's or Pasadena. Mm -hmm. And the young caballeros on their stout horses trailed behind, yelling through perfect teeth, que viva la fiesta dressed as conquistadores, wearing their new grown beards and the latest style of sunglasses. And I thought of the Pueblo Down Road and what its people must feel for this reenactment. And I am everything at that point and nothing, for I could feel joyous and celebratory, for we have endured my people, mi raza, el mestizaje, los manitos, la huerfanda, the orphaned ones whom Spain abandoned, Mexico did not adopt, and the U.S. never wanted. And I feel the sorrow of the Indio because of that enduring. And my heart, if it could be captured, painted, and displayed, exhibited in the finest gallery where the locals do not enter, would be earthen, grayed, and splintered. A tinge of red, perhaps, colors of the wooden crosses tilting in their final balance in the Camposanto among the ruins of that first iglesia destroyed in the Pueblo revolt of that not so long ago. Wow. So imagine that in a dome as he's reading with those images displayed around you. It's a really immersive. Thank you for coming up early and sharing that with us, <laughs> Levi. Thank you. Thank what a you. pleasure yeah, it's to been meet a pleasure. you. Thank yeah. you, sir.